folks Wednesday night about a video that I've watched on uh, on YouTube, and it's called the uh, the Catholic Church: A Force for Good. The Catholic Church: A Force for Good. And it's a actually it was a debate that was held in London. Two people represented the Catholic Church. Two people represented um, the uh, opposing side. The, they represented the world. Uh, the Bible says in the last days that the kingdoms that we're in right now, there's nothing solid about any of it. It said it's made up the feet. We're down to the feet now. I mean, no, we're down to the feet of that image that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed of. See, a lot of times we want God to give us a dream, give us a vision, but what God does is he gives a vision to somebody that's in the world, and then it, they don't know what it means, and it takes somebody that's in touch with the Spirit of God to then grasp that and tell them this is what the Lord says that that vision means. And so it was Daniel that told Nebuchadnezzar, from the head of gold, the shoulders of silver. Can you imagine what that image looked like? Uh, belly and thighs of brass, from the knees down, legs of iron. But from the feet on down to the toes, it was miry clay mixed with chunks of iron. Okay? It didn't say there's chunks of silver in those feet, did it? Chunks of iron. Chunks of iron. So everyone looking for a Muslim uh, antichrist isn't paying attention to the vision, are they? Because the iron represented what empire? Mm. Rome. Everybody say Rome. Rome. What's the official religion of, the, of Rome? Yeah, it's a state religion. Okay? We don't have a state religion in the United States. But there's fixing to be one. There's fixing to be one. So y'all need to decide to get in and get hot and start serving and start living, start participating, start showing up. Or, or you're going to, or, or is he, when he comes here, is he going to find you with your lamp that's half full? I mean, it's a question you've got to ask yourself. I don't, have to, I don't have to read your mail. You read your own mail, right? I'm, not, I'm supposed to stay out of your mailbox, right? And so I'll stay out of your mailbox, but I want you to start examining yourself and realize that all this stuff that you're seeing on how you're going to build a real estate fortune and how you're going to do an investment fortune and there's all these coaches out there that if you'll hook up with them, they're going to show you how to increase your wealth. And I got news for the world. Peg says I say that a lot. I got news for you. But I've got news for you. All of that in one fell swoop, probably over one night, you'll get up the next morning. And if you don't come underneath the heel of a, of a fellow that's going to be an antichrist, all that wealth and riches is not going to be yours any longer. Your money will not transfer into their new economy. Uh, now, that's what the Bible says is going to happen. It says we've already saw now they're trying to institute travel things where you can't travel here or there without this little thing. Said you've had a vaccine. Well, the world's coming loose at the seams right now with this silly vaccine. You think it's just me. I have people get upset at me over this whole thing just because I'm just revealing what's coming and, and then all of a sudden it shows up. And then, I, you know, it's funny. Domestic situations are the worst. Police hate them because by the time they get between that, that uh, fella and that gal and they're having at it, uh, and, and the next thing you know, they're loving and kissing on each other and they're mad at him for getting in the middle and preachers for getting in the middle and family for trying to get in the middle. Then... You become the bad person. Well, guess what? The Lord said, well, then I guess I'll be the bad guy. Because I'm going to stand between death and life. I'm going to be that daysman that Job was looking for. I'll be the intermediator. I'll be the go-between. I'll be your advocate. An advocate gets between somebody that's in trouble and certain judgment. And every one of y'all have certain judgment coming towards you and your house and your families and your children. And if you don't get your heart right with God and get your life straight with God, and, if, and you better give God what's His, that means His tithe and offering. I taught here last week, it's not, there's no curse attached to it now. You say, well, He's not cursing us anymore. No, He's not, but don't expect all the things that follow that blessing. It's on your high heels now. Don't tear it. Unless you park over here in the gravel, you will not tear up your high heels. Ain't too many people wearing high heels no more. Is there anybody in here with high heels on today? What, well, them are not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those 
you know, what did you call those? Yeah, yeah, made all of us kids that was in church back in those days. We loved to go to church because all the girls wore those high heels. And uh, we did. I'm sorry. Um, you know, back in that day, little boys, we just loved little girls. Little girls love little boys. I see them now. I ask them, you got a girlfriend? They'll go, no, girlfriend. Or you'll ask the little girl, you got a boy boyfriend? What? And they're lying because I know that you do. Everybody, you know there's something about us that likes to be loved, isn't there? Am, am I lying? Is there anybody in here that don't like to be loved and hold hands with somebody, go watch a movie with somebody? Huh? Speaking of going to watch a movie, I was up in uh, Grayling, Michigan one time with a bunch of soldiers, just all a bunch of us guys up there in Grayling, Michigan, the National Guard. And, uh, and, and we were doing a lot of training out in the field, but then we'd come back in at night. And, uh, and so I took my leather work up there because I like doing leather work. And I was trying to get some wallets and things and checkbook covers that I was making for people back home. Because, you know, we're just going to go ahead and take advantage of the time. i got some time on my hands. I'm going to make something out of leather, and I'll sell them when I get back home. So I'm sitting there, and I had a paintbrush because I was uh, staining and everything the, the leather. And I, I just put that, that brush in my mouth, you know, kind of like, like that. Yeah, and I'm sitting here, like that. I had it underneath my tongue, like that right there. And I dropped something on the floor, and I backed up just a little bit, and then I leaned forward real fast to get it. And this thing hit the desk in front of me and ran that paintbrush clean through my tongue in through, into the back of my throat. I was, uh, not, I'm not kidding, I was pierced like that. Boom, and I was like, uh-oh, uh-huh. And, and then immediately without thinking, I mean, I didn't want it to swell up around that paintbrush and hold on to it, you know, so I pulled it right back out. And boy, I was just like blood just a spurting. And so, uh, oh, ma'am. And, and this is ridiculous. Look what I did to myself. And we're out in the middle of nowhere. So I walked down the hallway. The only guy that had a vehicle with us was in the shower. I walked in there, and I just went and saw him here recently. He lives out at Twin Oaks. Uh, his name's Lawler. Uh, Major Lawler lives out there. And, uh, and I said, I need to go take me to the hospital. Like that. And, uh, <laughs> and he saw and he goes, what's the matter? He goes, also, leans out, what's the matter? I said, I just ran a paintbrush through my tongue, that's all. What? <laughs> yeah, he said, well, give me a minute. So I'm just standing there. I just stuffed a paper towel in my mouth, you know, went back down there and went back to work on the wallet until he got ready. And uh, he just took his time. I mean, if y'all had something bad going on, and everybody around you just takes their time, right? Lazarus is, is dying. Come and help us. And he just, Jesus said, I'll get to it in a minute. And he just kept walking the other, he didn't walk like that. But anyway, he just walked the other way. You know, I wonder how Jesus walks. Who do you think he walked like? You think he walked like James Dean? I do. I think he walked like James Dean. I think when he get happy, he'd dance like Elvis. Yo, man, what's Elvis had to get that from somewhere, you know. And, uh, but anyway, he gets ready. He takes me to the hospital. And, uh. They give me a shot of, a, 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 what do you call that, a tetanus shot? Because I couldn't remember the last time I had one. And, uh, but tetanus shots are good for at least 10 years. This vaccine ain't good for six months. Ain't that the truth? Come on. Come on, man. Uh, let's, let's go. Get, get us something that really works for a long time, right? We got something that works for a long time. What is it? It's called repentance, water baptism in the name of Jesus, baptizing me with his Holy Ghost, me bearing the fruit of the Spirit, me living a life that's pleasing to God, me being a fisher of men, me being faithful, me being uh, rightness. Uh, I like it because, see, that's what we want to hear when we stand in front of him. Is that what you want to hear? Right? My good and... So you got to ask yourself, am, have I been faithful in all things? Because he's going he's gonna to judge your report card. And I think on the back of some of our report cards, like mine used to be, it would say he talks too much. Did anybody else get that on the back of your report card? Talks too much. I did. I talked a lot, but I didn't know half, half and most of my life was going to be talking. Yeah, talking, teaching, preaching, singing, right? Isn't it, isn't it a great thing? Aren't you glad we got something good to talk about? We don't have bad news. We got good news. 
I'm not telling y'all go home. You got to pack your basement with at least, you know, these poor Mormons. We got to pray for the Mormons. We can actually probably know you can pray for a Mormon. Sure you can, because they are, they are told to save up food in their basement for the tribulation. Did y'all know that? And how much food do they save in their basement? How much are they supposed to have stored up? Everybody say one year. Well, now there's a little problem with that because when the wrath of God starts, because see, we're going to be eating and drinking all the way up to the taking away of the bride and the kingdom of light, okay? Two groups of people get to go with the bride because they have to witness the wedding, but they're not going to be in the bride. The bride always takes the name of the bridegroom. We've got a world of church that will not baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, and that's quite all right with me. I look at them and I just go, I understand that you are going to be at our wedding. You RSVP. You're going to be a palm bearer. You're going to, yeah, you're going to, you're going to be there. You're going to be a witness. But how many is glad that you've been buried in the name of the Lord? Amen. Now, y'all play games with it all you want. Tiptoe around the tulips if you want, but the Bible don't tiptoe around it. It said, baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when you can get around that one, I asked a Catholic family the other day, I said, your first pope was Peter, is that right? They said, yes. I said, what did Peter say about water baptism? And they're like, we don't know. I said, well, let's take a look at it. Turn to Acts 2.38. We read the very words of their, who they say is their first pope. And he said, baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that what it said? Or is that missing out of your Bible now? Ain't missing out of mine. Ain't even missing out of the Catholic Bible. It's not miss, missing out of the Jewish Bible. No. Everybody shout no. No, no it ain't missing. So, so where are we missing it? You see what I'm saying? Even if you thought he was 15 people, there's 15 guys running around up there, and they all somehow are God, right? Can I say 15? I can say 15 because they say three. The Bible says one, but they say three. And, and, and so if all of them were up there, the Bible still tells me to be baptized in what name? Jesus. Now, can we get around that? No. Can't cast a check unless I sign it, can you? And if you sign it and I, and I go down there and I look and I say, that's not my sign. That's not my signature. That's what signature means. It's your personal sign that you have an uh, innate ability to do over and over and over and over. You tend to sign the same way, same way, same way, same way. Unless you get tired and... You finally just get to where you're just like, looking like a doctor, right? Some of y'all sign your checks like a doctor. So here's what the Lord tells us coming up to this day that we're looking at. He says, we are supposed to prosper. Everybody shout prosper. prosper. So if you're not prospering, then I just ask you just examine yourself for a minute. Get in God's presence. It's none of our business. And examine yourself and examine your ways, the Bible says. Uh, uh, look at yourself. And then make the changes you're supposed to make, right? You've got to make the changes you're supposed to make. And, and, and if you will get yourself in one mind and one accord with the Spirit of God, and all of a sudden you, get, you lose your bashfulness. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Dick uh, Haltham, he used to have his Bible uh, in the top drawer of his toolbox there at uh, Mid-States. He'd, he'd come in here and wanted to call the police or an ambulance the first time he came in the back doors. And he's, now, he's the one we should have called somebody about because he was dressed funny because he was dressed in his uh, softball outfit, outfit. You know, it looked like they had knickers on and all that stuff, you know. And uh, and comes in here and uh, looking, and everybody's falling out in the Spirit, and the Holy Ghost is falling, and people are getting baptized, and people are praying everywhere and preaching going on. And, and, uh, and the next thing you know, he, he got a little too close to the fire. You go ahead and stand back if you don't want some. Stay way back from that fire. But, but your s'more will never melt if you don't get it up close to the fire. Amen? Amen. You, your chocolate will never melt. Right? How many like s'mores? I do. Yeah, we're going to have to have some big kind of a fall shindig or something. Build some fires and, and, and have some, roast some hot dogs and have some fun. Okay, you know, you know, and and, and uh, that sounds good to me. And I went, I went to a shindig the other day out at Bickford. Uh, they were having a thing. I got a thing uh, sent to me. said, Bickford's having an open house, and I went. And uh, they wanted to know if I wanted to have a tour. I said, no, we ain't going to be here long enough. We won't be, we won't be here long enough. 
to go to Bigford, but they had a taco box truck out there, and they had a guy picking on a guitar, and he was asking for songs, so I was throwing songs out to him. He'd start singing, and I'd sing harmony with him. And uh, <laughs> me and him were about to go on the road again. It was. It was a good time. What's that? Yes, Bigford Nursing Home. Yeah, they want to know if, if I want to put my mom and dad in the nursing home. <laughs> I, said, I said, no. No. <laughs> Lordy Jesus. No, they got a piano in there and you'd be having church. Are you kidding? Yeah. Uh, and, and so what, what tends to happen uh, as we get older, our bodies start reverting back to like we were when we was a child. Do you all know that? We go from being, being a little bitty baby to being a grown-up adult to all of a sudden reverting back to almost childhood again. Let me tell you something. That's why the Lord, He is dead on it when He says, My little children. He calls us little children. Because He knows when trouble comes, when calamity comes, we don't have no problem going, Daddy! My heavenly Father watches over me. Now, hallelujah. I love Him. Hallelujah. He cares for me. All mountains bleak. When, when you're at the height of something, but it's barren in your life. At the height of a career, and you're lonely. Height of everything, and, and you ain't enjoying a thing. I'd rather be in the valley. Because down there, he restoreth my soul. That means he gets me my mind back. Because some of the things we do, it's because we're truly out of our mind. My soul means my mind. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Turn to 2 Timothy with me. We are, we are going to prosper when we get in line with God's Word. You will prosper. When you're not in line with God's Word, you will lose. People wonder, why is this happening to me? You got to examine your life. Examine yourself. Come on, am, am I out of line? You know, uh, we asked that someone, I think it was uh, Brandilyn asked a couple of Wednesday nights ago. She said, what does it mean to be in one accord? Right? And I said, well, that's when you go over there to, to Lafayette Pike. They got a, a, a car lot over there that sells those accords. And if you buy just one of them and we all get in it, then we'll all be in one accord. And she said, that's not it. That ain't it. And they're all in one accord. Twelve apostles in Jesus. It looked, like a, it looked like a clown car at a circus. You know? All right, get that off your mind. Yeah, there it went. Uh, and uh, you, you remember uh, Brother Stone would come here? Brother Stone come here? And he had a, a, a walloping briefcase of songs, but out of that briefcase he would only sing... One song. Same song. Shout, same song. Why? Because he was in one mind and one accord, and he had, it had struck a chord with him, and that song was the anchor holds. And that anchor that holds, that anchor that holds, it's, it comes, there's a, a, a chord that comes out of your heart. The Bible calls it a silver chord, right? S say Silver. A silver cord, uh, and, and it talks about it in the 12th chapter of Ecclesiastes. It says, and if e'er the silver cord be cut, and the, and the golden bowl broken at the cistern, can't hold nothing no more. Can't hold on to the spirit no more. Because the silver cord got cut. And, and your body goes back to the ground which gave it, but your spirit goes back like a light speed to God who gave it. To leave your body, you don't go into a place called purgatory. To leave your body, you go back and whoosh, right back and stand just like Lazarus in front of the Lord. And he looks over at the angel and says, loose that man. Loose that woman. Loose him as we step into eternal life. Hallelujah. Because we are sealed by the name of Jesus until the day of redemption. Your body hasn't been redeemed yet. That's the reason we, it still acts up and does silly things sometimes. 
You know, you ever see someone with a twitch? You know, <laughs> or the, uh, 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 like that. I've seen one guy, he was a mechanic, and he keep from banging his head underneath the car when he'd start twitching. He'd hold on to his car like a, he just be tightening the wrenches. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. That kind of stuff. We had a guy in officer candidate school with me, and, and the more, and they made him, they made him the, the commander one weekend. They take turns making us commander, and, and we'd be in charge. They want to see how each person did in commanding and marching and giving out orders and all that kind of stuff. And so when it was his turn in the box, his last name was Shuck. Uh, but I won't say his name. Uh, uh, so, and, uh, so you won't know him if you see him. Because he's a little short guy, and the more excited he'd get, and the more pressure they'd put on him, and get down there yelling at him with their hats, and he'd just start that twitching, just to twitching and, and talking funny like that, and we would just laugh, and then we'd get in trouble for laughing. And the drill sergeants were going to have to go around the corner because they were laughing, but they didn't want us to see them laughing because they always had to put on a mean face. And the more pressure it got on him, the more, the more he couldn't hold still. Do you know what I've seen in church? I've seen that the more the power comes down, the more I got the same problem, the more I can't hold still. Hallelujah. One song says, I was there when the Spirit came. Hey, how many was there when the Spirit came? Yeah. Felt the power and I praised His name. And I was there when the Spirit came. Felt the power falling from above. All the wondrous goodness of His love. I was there when the Spirit came. On the blessed day of Pentecost, the disciples in the Spirit were lost. They were there when the Spirit came. Hallelujah. Heard a sound of a rushing mighty wind. It fell on every one of them, and they were there when the Spirit came. Right? And so uh, I tell you about Brother Stone. He'd come here, and he'd, pray about, he'd sing about that anchor hole. So it, this reel of silver cord comes out of my heart, out of the heart of every one of you. And it's like we're all... If you could see the silver cords here that have all gathered up and they all go right back up to the same place, the Bible says that it goes right through the veil of the temple, right into the holies of holies, and the anchor that holds me is anchored within the veil, the Bible says. That means I've got my anchor attached in something good, something firm, something unmovable. The Bible says it won't move. And it don't matter where you are out here on this thing. It's like you were on a bungee cord. We're like, whoa. And he just goes, Rrr. like that. Back you come. Yeah, you go ahead and try to run from him. You're just on a bungee cord that you can't. And he, just, he says, ain't nobody going to cut it. And it pulls you right back into him. Poof, right back into the holies of holies. And he goes, hi. You go, well, hello, Jesus. You know, where was I at last Sunday? Well, I was a fishing. What did I catch? Three crappie and two bass. Yeah. Yeah, I like that phone call from God. Remember that? Who remembers the phone call from God? Two people. Phone call from God. <laughs> it's hilarious. Look it up. Phone call from God. Uh, he answers the phone and, and he says, hello, hello. And, and, he, and it's God on the, other, on the other end of the line. And he just kind of starts asking questions. The man realizes he's in trouble. And so he, go, he hangs up the phone and his wife said, hi. And he said, she said, who was it? He said, oh, trust me, you don't know him. But the next time the phone rings, you answer the phone. <laughs> Who was it on the phone? Trust me, you wouldn't know him. Yeah, that's the way it ends up. So the next time you answer the phone, look at somebody next to you and say, you better, you need, somebody needs to answer the phone. Yeah, somebody needs to answer the phone. Jesus is calling. He's calling calling today calling today Jesus is call calling he's tenderly calling today yeah Jesus is calling you, are you going are we going to wait till the last minute to to really dig in and get close and get right and really have an experience are we just going to keep having this peripheral experience with god or are we going to make up our minds to get in because if it's peripheral it's lukewarm and if it's lukewarm he said i'll spew you out of my mouth the lord's got this thing about hot and cold it's either going to be hot 
or for goodness sake, go get cold. Go get her done. Go do whatever you want to do. But if you're going to be hot, get close. Goshen, where Israel lived in Egypt, means draw me nearer. That's what Goshen means, to be drawn close to. Right? And, and, and the calamities that fell on Egypt and the world around them fell on everybody but did not fall on them. While the world came apart at the, at the axles, the children of God increased, increased, increased. Left there truly in wealth, left there in health. Nobody was sick when they rolled out of there. Their shoes did not wear out for 40 years. Even though they were surrounded by all their flocks of goats and sheep and cattle and camels. Guess what? In the desert, they were not allowed to eat any of their flocks. 40 years of your flocks, making more flocks, making more flocks, making more flocks, because you ain't eating none of them. It's funny, they never ate meat in the wilderness. They were only allowed to eat one thing, and that thing was the manna that fell from heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, that's the true bread come down from heaven. Yeah. Jesus Christ, the word of God. We hold it in our hands today. Supposed to eat it every day. You don't have to read the whole thing in a day. He says just get enough for today. There's more than enough in that thing. There's more tomorrow. Quit worried and trying to heap up a whole bunch and say I memorized more than you. They didn't, they ain't a story one of them eating a cattle, their camels, a goat, or a sheep. No chickens. They didn't even eat no turkeys. They didn't eat nothing. The only thing you'll find them eating for 40 years in the wilderness up to a point was manna. And then they began to cry out for meat. Did they not? Did they not? Give us meat. And the Lord's like, well, you have angel food cake. You have manna from heaven. It's just, there's no effort to it. You just go out, you gather it up like, like uh, snowballs. It was like coriander seed, they said. And then you just made out of it, you baked it and, and ate it. And, and I think they said it tasted like, like something with honey on it. Isn't that what it said? It, sounded like, it tasted like cake with honey on it. It was fresh every day. Cake, bread with honey on it. Taste and see, David said, the Lord is... Good. He said it's sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. Hallelujah. He's here. And so then they begin to cry out for meat. Okay. The issue about meat is something has to die. Right. And he was showing them an essence of both animals and people getting to experience for 40 years eternal life. Um, just a microcosm. Uh, getting to live and not having to die. That was what they were to have experienced in the wilderness. But then they begin, the people begin to experience death, did they not? Why did they begin to experience death? Because of their unbelief. Your unbelief is deadly. It's deadly to me. It's deadly to you. It's deadly to your neighbor. Unbelief. Unbelief to think for a minute that what God did yesterday, He's not able to surpass and do more than that this year. And more than that next year, we walk in the promises of God. We will prosper right up to the door of His coming. And we just might have the courage to walk in and borrow some jewels from some of these Egyptians out here. Because we'll never have to pay it back. Never. Because Jesus said, you see these people? Take a good look at them. Because you will never, ever see them again. Hallelujah! We're getting ready to leave this place. Amen. Now, now uh, uh, Brother Stone would sit over there and play that Anchor Hole song, right? Yeah. And, and, and I'd get all excited because old Brother Stone is here. And every time I would forget. But the rest of y'all didn't forget. And y'all would all look at me and, or you'd look at me and tell me to go get on the drums. I only did that a couple times, but I discovered you can't play the drums with Brother Stone. Mm. This end. All the way to that end. Back down to this end. Back up to that end. He just, he, hit, he wanted to hit every key on them ivories. Every key on them ivories. 
All the way. It sounded like a waterfall. The anchor hole. <laughs> and I, so I'd get up there, I'd be like, and, and, and I'd try to get in rhythm with him. You couldn't get in rhythm with him, could I? Brock, where Brock? He used to always get tickled. He's like, get on them drums, Nate. And, and uh, I, I'm like, I can't play with him. I, we, me and him have trouble getting in one mind and, and one accord because the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement, right? Amen. Everybody shout in agreement. Is everybody in agreement here about the name of Jesus? Oh, yes. Everybody in agreement that there ain't but one Lord. Amen. There ain't but one faith. Amen. There ain't but one baptism. Amen. There's just one God. One God. One God. One God. He is Father of all. He's above all. He's through you all. He is the hope of glory. That's good news. He said, I'll never let you go. I said, I'll never let you go. And you say, well, I know about her and I know about him. And I know some things they slipped and dipped and did and done. You better get your eyes on him and your eyes off of us. Every one of us has slipped and fell. And there ain't nothing any better or any greater than the other one. Sin is sin. Amen? Sin is sin. Somebody came out the other day. I walked in moment, I walk in some opportune or inopportune times sometimes. Says somebody posted up there, said, I believe God made man male and female. Whoever agrees with me, uh, give me a thumbs up deal. And, and so I'm not now wait a minute. Uh, and so then I, I, she was going to already hit it. She had already hit it. <laughs> and, and I said, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to, I want to answer that. So I got on there and I, and I answered just a paragraph about that long uh, of where we're at in time and that we are in just like it was in the days of Noah, that they've done so many hybrid things with our food and with our, with our animals that we eat and, and with human beings, with stuff that they've shot into us Way before this vaccine, we have no idea what they shot in your body. You ain't got a clue and don't act like you do. None of y'all know what we've put in our mouth and taken into our bodies and what we've been exposed to through chemicals and things that were around. Do you know there's chemicals you can get around? It's just one chemical that can cause mutagens and teratogens. It, there's things that can literally, you don't even realize that you got affected. And you go, well, I feel okay. But the minute that you have a baby, you find out that something you absorbed something that then affected your child. Child comes out and there's something wrong. Something ain't right. I've never seen the height of children with autism and Aspergerism and every other kind of ism that you can imagine. Now the nurse that just used to stop bloody noses and give you an aspirin or send you home now has cabinets full, locked up of medication for all the kids that go to her school. Days of Noah. Days of Noah and children have came about with, with every manner of thing. They come into this world and they truly come here in innocence and cannot help the way that they are. Amen. People say, well, well, you wasn't born that way. Yes, they are. Amen. We might as well get on past it. Yes, they are. yes, they are. Yes, they are. There's a bunch of kids that come here the way that they are and the way that we see. And then we want to set back from our position of righteousness and go, but we're normal. Yeah, I understand that, but see, God came after the abnormal. He came after the, the, the fallen. He came after the outcast. He came after people that no, everyone else had already given up on. You wouldn't walk into a leper colony back in those days, but Jesus had no problem getting around the lepers, and they'd all just love all over him and give him a big old hug. High five Jesus and all that. he just love them up. Because we have not a high priest who cannot be touched let me touch him yeah. and he touched all of them healed all their afflictions all their diseases and told them now you can go back home because see we're all getting ready in ecclesiastes 12 it says why does all these things happen to man the demise of a man because we're going back to our long home we're getting ready to go home yeah. folks we're getting ready to go home I can't beat a drum loud enough. Need Brother Holmes up here with his bass drum and his tambourine to beat the drum and walk around a city and tell him, you better get ready. Yeah. Jesus is going to be coming. Amen. You think all this nonsense is just, just another little old bit of nonsense and raw, raw political news of things going on. Folks, 
this world's fixing to come off at the hinges. Watch. Watch. You, look, look, I was in Tractor Supply up in Lafayette yesterday, and, and I'm telling you, uh, guns f just flying off the shelves. Ammo, they can't keep it. it. It's all these people are arming themselves to the teeth. People, I've seen little old ladies in there, little old ladies, little old men in there buying ammo and buying guns. I mean, you better not go in some house, some little old senior citizen. They're like, pew, pew. <laughs> yeah, pew, pew, you'll run right back out that door. Just let people start marauding. Let people start breaking in homes. Watch what happens. Watch how fast. If you're here, if you're here, there's a problem with the oil in your lamp. That's the only reason you'll find yourself here, that you would miss the rapture because the oil in your lamp was empty. And you're going to try to borrow some from somebody else. Let me get a little bit of your anointing. Them wise virgins says, I'm sorry, but, but what God had for me, it was for me. The anointing that I got is mine. You got to get your own. Well, how do I get it? You got to start getting down at altars. You got to start praying. You got to start being faithful. You got to start giving God what's his. You think it's just that, oh, Nate wants to get rich. Nate never has got rich, pastor in church. What I wanted to do was get in and get faithful and get folks in here and get you to be faithful. Then we could have had anything we wanted. What if some did not believe, he says. And I've watched a bunch of folks that decided not to believe. And they just simply said, I don't believe you. What if, the Bible says, what if some would not believe? Does that make the word of God of none effect? No. God forbid. Let every man be a liar. The word of God is true. This world's coming to an end. And, and what I watched the other night in watching that YouTube thing showing, showing out of 2,000 people in a building and they placed this organization, this, this woman in red riding the beast in Revelations. Because that's who's riding the beast right now. She's geeing and hawing it, telling her which way to go. But it says that the beast, during the midst of this tribulation period, it's going to hit a point when suddenly the beast goes, who is this on my back? And it says the beast is going to turn on that woman and rend her, and it's going to be a deadly day then. All the people in that organization that are in these seats of power and tout themselves that that's who and what we are, they're going to be running for their hills and running for the hideouts. There's a deadly day coming, folks. Deadly. And you don't have to be here. We know how to get out of this world. How shall we escape? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and for the promises unto you, and it's unto your children. It's funny how I get there. Da, 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 da. It's all like, rah, 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 rah. And he goes, rah, 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 rah. take that devil. Take that sin. Take that world. It's almost like you got a Thompson submachine gun in your hand. It's a Thompson. Well, this is a Thompson chain here. Yeah, Donald's got a Schofield. Watch out. It's a grease gun of the Word of God. Amen. Someone shout hallelujah. 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 You've got to get ready to leave this place. 2 Timothy chapter 2. So, yeah, I, I would try to play with Brother Stone, and, and, I, and I couldn't because me and him weren't, on the, weren't here in the same, we weren't going to the beat of the same drummer, right? right? You ever anybody know someone you work with or live around that marches to the beat of a different drummer? Right? Well, guess what? We're all supposed to be marching to the beat of the same drummer. That's the reason when, when we hear that rhythm and we hear that beat and when we hear the, the, the drums, you can have an awesome choir, fantastic piano and organ player, and you have a bad drummer and he will mess it up for everybody. He will, he will ruin it for everybody. And, and, uh, and, and so it says, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? Once you've been in the military, how many of y'all been in the military of some kind? Or in ROTC or something like that, right? Well, when you walk along beside the guy beside you uh, in the military, when his left foot hits the ground, I don't care if you're on the back row or on the front row of that great big company. When, when the guy's in the front, when their left foot hits the ground, the guy's in the back's left foot's hitting the ground. Amen. Right foot's hitting the ground, yeah. and it sounds like one man marching. Yeah. Because the Army, the M Marines, the Navy, the Air Force... They all know how to get in one mind and one accord. Amen. 
And, and so when I, after you've done that for a while, now to this day, I'll, I'll be 60 here in a few more months. And as, you're, as I'm walking along with somebody, and, and we're walking through the mall or anything, and they're, 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 they're hitting this, and I see this going on over here. I see it, and I can't stand it. And, and so since they don't know how to fix it, then I fix it. Then I get in rhythm with them. I can't take it. And so we're walking along together, and we're just talking like that, you know, and, they're, and, then, and you can just take a little skip like that. Everybody tell you take a skip. Somebody, that's why people used to skip around the church, used to run around the church. I think it's because they're trying to get in step. Shout it, get in step. Get in step. Yeah. And, and them drill sergeants, they, they, uh, they'll do this. They'll like mark time while you're marching past them because they're watching you walk past them because they're wanting to make sure that everybody's on the same rhythm Amen. and the same beat. I think Jesus does the same thing. Amen. I believe he's watching to see, is our feet hitting the ground at the same time? Because, boy, if they are, we got a mighty, we got a mighty church. Amen. We got a mighty thing. Everybody shout mighty. Mighty. My mighty. God, mighty. Yeah, you could just tell. You could almost tell when I'd go to a football game, I'd sneak and say I was supposed to go somewhere else, and I'd catch a ride and go to a football game because we weren't supposed to go to football games back in those days. And, and I'd go to football, and, and, and you'd see this other team get off the bus, and even the colors of their uniforms look, look dangerous. And their band would get off out. <laughs> And they'd just be like, oh my. And, and just everything about them, they hadn't even took the field yet. And something happened inside of us, and they're like, these guys are going to just roll right over us. How many of y'all been to a game and seen that happen? The other team show up in such, such power and such might, and, and they hit the field with it, and they run off the field with it. They just run over everybody. Because there's something about the heart of a man. don't matter about the size of a man. It matters about the heart of a man. And if, you, and if you lose the heart to walk this walk and fight this fight, you will be taken in this fight. Satan will see that you are weak, and he will attack you. He'll attack your family. He'll attack everything about you. Because he knows, just like an old lion, I'm going to catch these things that are out here on, in the back. That's what I'm going to catch. I'm going to have me a, a snack today. Some of y'all have been a Scooby snack for the devil. Anyway, 2 Timothy, can I help? say, get there, Nate. Come on now. Come on. What time is it? All right, all right. All right, I got a few minutes here. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Woo! Verse 20. What's it say? Everybody want to read it with me? Everybody there? Chapter 2, verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold, and of silver, but also of wood, and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. Everybody shout in a great house. Let me tell you what kind of house you're in today. It's a great house. And seated around you are people that I would dare say are a vessel of gold. They've been through the fire so many times that they came forth out of the other end of it as pure gold. Hallelujah. We were talking about it Wednesday night, about gold, and how they use gold in, in wiring of, of uh, uh, cell phones and computers and anything in spaceships and all that. And the question is, why would they use gold over other metals that can obviously conduct power? Because silver, they say, it conducts power better than anything. Everybody shout silver. Silver, but, but, but what does silver do over time? It does what? It tarnishes and it will affect the connections. It'll affect the connections. So guess what? Can't stay silver. Silver's good, but it sure don't have the value gold does, does it? And silver is, is malleable, but not near as malleable as, as gold. And see, gold, gold, they can bend that stuff and they can weave that stuff. And it can get in real tight situations and real bad problems and real heartaches and real disappointments. It, it just has a way of, of flowing and getting down to the, the bottom of things. Because you get this cauldron real hot and everything else that ain't gold, what does it do? Rises to the top and goes out this little, this little dip in the edge of the thing. It lets it just run out over the side. And someone sends there with a... A, sco a skimmer and just keep skimming the slag off, skimming the slag off because uh, God wants to use something that won't tarnish. 
that the connection won't get messed up that it is an inert uh, product, that it don't have some chemical reaction. Silver and copper and all these can have tarnishing issues and chemical reaction issues when they get too close to other things. And they have a, a thing that they said it actually has to do with the skin of the metal. And boy, when I read that, that it had to do with the skin of a metal. Uh, Jim came up to me the other night. He said, now, you know, there's some other, other things that they, uh, they conduct electricity uh, better than, but not longer. Everybody say it better than, but not longer than. And see, that's where the issue is, is longer than. Because the guy we're dealing with is dealing in something that is eternal. Shout eternity. eternity. We're fixing to face eternity. If you don't believe it, hang on, it's coming. You think they can mandate a vaccine? Watch them mandate the mark of the beast. They're getting you, they, they're trying to get the world, uh, uh, their mindset the where when we tell you to do something, did you know that almost 20 years ago, Joe Biden said the same words of what he was, what was going to happen in this day, and who knew that he was going to be the guy to do it? Wow. I've got it. It's, it was 20 years ago. I sent, I, I, I think I sent one to sent it to Aaron, uh, let him see it. Uh, did you see that, Aaron? When I sent that to you, he said it like 20 years ago. Do you have it? Oh, pull it up for me. Pull it up for me, because folks, this stuff was set. They already planned this stuff a long time ago. This ain't something new. This didn't crop up. This didn't show up out of some poor little old bat and some lizard. Oh, hang on. They can't hear that. No, no, no. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no. It's the propensity of conduct. Yeah, so see, that's why I say they don't even give, I guarantee you, they don't give the same vaccination everywhere. All right, now here. If we don't get one disease under control, you may find legislative bodies taking whole classes of people based upon propensity of conduct well, to say we're going to put you in a certain category we're going to demand mandatory testing for you if we don't get one disease under control you may find legislative bodies taking whole classes of people based upon propensity of conduct we want you to, well, to say we're going to put you in a certain category we're going to demand mandatory testing that was that was over 20 years ago that's a young that's a young joe biden we sold out to politicians, a Christian, us Christians, us people that belong to a kingdom of God. We suddenly picked up a flag and marched with it and said, I'm a this or I'm a that. You better get a hold of your Bible. You better get a hold of God because that's where we are today. All this is happening today. This is going to come to an end. This is the year 2021, is it not? What month are we in? September, is it not? Next year, it, here in, 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 in less than, than uh, how many months? Five months till January? In, Janu in, in uh, 2022, they kick off Chrislam. What is Chrislam? Do you know what? Tell me what it is. False religion, that's what it is. It, it, it's called the Abrahamic family house is what they call it. They throw poor Abraham's name on it. Steve Harvey's even went over there and saw it in Abu Dhabi. Yeah? Because that's where they've got this headquartered at, in the middle of a Muslim world. But the guy that put it all together is supposed to be the head of a Christian church called the Catholic Church. And so they built three huge buildings over there in Abu Dhabi. And I made a joke out of it. Uh, I said they wanted to build those three buildings in Kuwait. But the people in Kuwait said that they didn't want to have them there. And, but the people over in Abu Dhabi said, Abu Dhabi do. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm glad I kept my day jobs. A anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got some? <laughs> okay, okay, all right, we'll go right ahead. Uh, I was going to say, testify, sister. <laughs> and so, they got these three churches over there. One's supposed to be a Catholic church, but I promise you, the believing Catholics, like this cardinal that we watched on this, YouTube, this video that happened in London, uh, the Catholic Church, a force for good. There's a whole huge part of that Catholic Church that's going to say, we have no idea who you people are. No you, will see a, you will see a split in them. Yes. It's already started. Do you know it's already started? In the Catholic Church, they ain't all on board with this guy. So don't think that they are. They're not. Uh, a whole lot of people walking in innocence, not knowing what the leadership is doing. 
But he's brought together the Muslim world that, that, that does not believe Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. He's brought together a Christian world that does not believe Jesus Christ was God man, manifested in the flesh. He brought together a Jewish world that does not believe that Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh. Pushed it all together. Hello, miry clay and, and chunks of iron. And it said, we're going to have a one world religion. And we're going to call it Chrislam. And it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Nothing. Because he said he's going to make you worship him. And, and, and he's, going to, he's, going to, he's going to try to get you to not be able to worship God. Now, now, are we going to get to see this Antichrist before we leave here? Yes. Second Thessalonians says that that day of our gathering together unto the Lord, that day shall not come except there first be a falling away first. Shall falling away. How many of us have watched the falling away? How many of y'all have been part of the falling away? Be honest. I'll raise my hand. I'll, I'll, I'll raise my hand. I've had some tough times here of late. Raise your hand if you've had some tough times here of late. Just be honest before the Lord. Okay? Falling away. It's not a good thing. This, this old bungee cord just starts going like that. And he's like, oh, you better get back here, boy. <laughs> I heard Dave Kennedy there in my mind for some reason. <laughs> it's hilarious. Came over to my house and... and, and on his little uh, uh, moped that he didn't have a muffler for. And went, blah, all the way up to my house. I heard him coming way down the road. Pulled in. I got my shop doors open. We got all kinds of leather work going on. He pulls up there. And he comes, he comes walking around my shop. You know how you boys doing? <laughs> you know, he just laughed. <laughs> and, and he walked over and I had some real handcuffs. Smith and Wesson handcuffs. <clears throat> hanging on a hook. Guy wanted me to make a case for him, you know. Uh, so he'd have a case there, put them in. And I hadn't made the case yet. And he goes over and he picks these up. He says, uh, these things real? I said, they're real, David. Don't mess with them because I don't have a key. And so <laughs> said, uh, he goes, nah, you know, David, nah. <laughs> he wa <laughs> I watch TV shows. I know how to get out of these things. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting here working, and I hear it go click, click. And there he stood. I said, David, what did you do? He arrested himself. He arrested himself. <laughs> Some of y'all need to get the handcuffs of the Word of God out and arrest yourself. Here, there, Otis, there's, there it is right there. Go on, get on in there. Otis, at least he had the, the gall, unmitigated gall, to put himself in there, right? Yeah. yeah, he knew it. I can't make her home tonight, boys. Woo! Go and get in there. And so I said, David, I don't have a key to get those off. And so he said, get, let me get some of your old tools here. He sat there and wore his wrist out trying to get that thing picked and get out. He couldn't get it out. I said, do you want me to call Mike Russ? No, don't call Mike Russ. So he did. Don't call Mike. I'll call him. I got his number. No, don't call him. And uh, <laughs> I said, uh, he said, I'll be right back. He hops on his moped in the handcuffs and rode like this down to New York shoe shop. So the New York shoe shop, he had keys to handcuffs. So he'd get him out and, and let him go. Anyway, where was I? Well, uh, yeah, Chrislam's coming out here in 2022. The one world religion. What are they fixing to do with money? They already ran us through a, a thing here at Walmart that they weren't going to take your cash no more. Did they not? First I said they ain't going to take your, your money, your coins no more. And what happened? Start saying there's a shortage of coins. It costs too much to make them. You know what, baloney. Every time you use that coin, that one quarter, think uh, just a, a dollar's worth of quarters, after a after hundred years, how much taxes have they made off that change? Huh? More than a quarter. A lot more than you could even sell the metal for. So, so they made us try to forget that they make money off of every time we spend a, a dime. It, it's all smoke and mirrors. Taking all the change away. Money's dirty now because you might get that 1% of a thing that might hurt somebody. There's a lot of other things that can hurt you a lot worse than that. Because we're bringing it down to a digital money, digital world, where all they got to do at the point that they want to shut you down is just hit a button. Because the Bible says you will not buy or sell without that mark of the beast. You will not buy or sell. You go, well, we'll just, we'll just do some chicken and horse trading out here. And I'm sure that will go on. I'm sure there's a world of people that will try to survive and not participate with him because the number of people 
that lose their heads. Now, how are we going to lose our heads if we don't believe in cutting off heads in America? Because we're going to let a religion take over and be the predominating rule of the world, and that religion is hooked up and tied up with people that don't mind cutting people's heads off if you don't worship the way they want you to worship. Now, wouldn't you rather lose your head this morning and hang on to your head? Wouldn't you rather lose your mind and let this mind, which is in Christ Jesus, be in you? Wouldn't you much rather? Wouldn't you rather? I want to read this. 2 Timothy 2 and 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. So don't think I can't come there and I can't worship because I know I don't measure up to, to Gloria that ain't here no more. She was about the closest thing to an angel I could know. She said, but I ain't always been that way. One night I hit my husband upside the head with a skillet and then went and locked myself in the bathroom, slept in it all night long. I was like, I couldn't believe this little old lady had it in her. But she went through the fire. You might not be a vessel of gold. You might need to go through the fire again. You might still be a vessel of silver. But also of wood. So don't worry about sitting and comparing yourself to the person sitting next to you. God sees the heart of a man. And of earth, that means of clay. And some to honor and some to dishonor. Even in this great house, there's some vessels that have done some dishonorable things this week. Done some honorable things this week. I mean, we've done both. Have we done both? I'll be honest with you. Both. You don't want to be honest? I'll, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. You know it's me. You're just a vessel of clay. But here's what he said. He took it all the way to the bottom. He didn't talk about a vessel of gold. He said the fire, fiery test of your faith is going to... How many know your faith is going to be tested? And it has to be tested by things in this world. Really bad things. Some of them worse than others. And it's damaging almost to your faith. You get, and careful, don't get mad at God. But he says, I'll let the fire take care of that. Listen what I'm going to do with this treasure of heaven, which is the Holy Ghost. He, where did he say he was going to put it? What kind of a vessel? Earthen. Everybody say earthen. Take it clean on down to the cheapest vessel you can get. An earthen vessel. How many earthen vessels do we have here this morning? Oh, we can all raise our hand on that. Because I wouldn't put myself in the category of gold right now. Even though I've been through the fire. I couldn't say that everything about me right now is gold. Everything about me right now ain't silver. Ain't even wood. Some things about me are still earthy, aren't you? I'm still earthy. But he said, I'm going to put the treasure of heaven inside of an earthen vessel. That's where he hid it. And he said, once it gets in there, can't nothing get it out. And, and you say, but what if my vessel gets, gets broke and fractured and it starts leaking out? Or it's burned so long and so, so strong. Because how many of y'all were so on fire when you came into this thing? So on fire. I, I've seen, I, Mike, I've seen you shake underneath the power of the Holy Ghost. Can't even hardly talk. I've seen, I've seen Tim Haltham sit over here on this floor. He might not act like it now. But on the floor right there, Tim Haltham sat right there and got filled with the Holy Ghost. I can name a whole bunch of people. We watched the owners of Ingress Plastines walk in here and go down and water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch the owners of the Shell gas stations in this town, the Boots Brothers, walk in here with the wife and go down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. People that heard the gospel preached, Dad preached it, and they responded to it, and they were sealed with the name of Jesus. And when the trumpet of God sounds, and the dead in Christ rise, and He shouts that great voice, Come forth! Guess who's going to go up out of this, this town with us? The owners of Ingers Plastines and Shell Oil. He's got rich men in this town that, that, that responded to the gospel. He's got poor folks that responded to the gospel. But guess what? When we get there, we're going to all get a crown. We're going to all get a diadem. Scepters in our hands. White robes. Gird about our paps with gold. Feet like brass. Eyes on fire. Can you imagine seeing that host of heaven come walking towards you, looking like that? These kings coming down from heaven with God Almighty, adorned as a bride for a, a, a wedding. We're going to come down here and, and, and take over this world. This world has no idea what's going to happen to it when we take over. Read it in Joel. Talks about it. 
We're going to take it over and there's going to be 12 seats of judgment around this world. And Jesus sitting on his throne in Jerusalem. We are at the door of this thing going down. We're at the door of the mark of the beast. You're at the door of all this. And, and rather than put Christ first and do something great for him, we're still trying to do something great in the world and trying to, trying to catch a, a fallen star. And that's all it is, it's falling stars. It's not going to be shooting stars no more, y'all. Not going to be. Mom can play. The altar is open. I'm going to ask you one more time. Examine yourself. Get in one mind and get in step with the Lord. If you're out of step, get in step. The time is too short for him to catch you with your lamp empty. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Stand to your feet. If you're striving and laboring for the ride, you can wear a golden crown.